Hey everyone and welcome back to Living the Dream and I'm delighted to be joined by an old friend, Jonathan Woodgate. Jonathan, how are you? Good Liam, I'm good, you? I'm very good, thank you for coming on Living the Dream. What are you up to right now? Just spending some time with the family, being away, being at Ibiza, just spending some good quality time with them. So Living the Dream is all about, it's a motivational chat with people that have done incredible things in, in, a, in, a, in their industry, so with you being football. So I'm going to get right into it and talk about some of your most memorable occasions, some of your highs, some of your lows. And I want to know what you felt on those days, what your mindset was like, how you got there. And uh, the listeners will be very, very happy to hear that. So let's start. So obviously born 1980, so you're a 40-year-old young man these days. So when you went to Leeds, then you had uh, success straight away. I mean, w- winning the Youth Cup. I mean, as a young footballer, that's really the, that's the first big challenge you have. And, and to win that, I mean, what, what was that like for you? Well, that's, a, that's a pinnacle. When you're, a, when you're a youth team player to win the FA Youth Cup, we did that and we had some fantastic players, the likes of uh, Harry Kuehl, Alan Mabry, Paul Robinson, uh, Alan Smith, Lee Matthews, Stephen McPhail. We had a fantastic youth team, all because of the coaches that we had in Paul Hart, Eddie Gray and Robin Ray, who taught us from that age what standards are all about and high standards in training, high standards in games, train how you play. And each day we, we worked really hard on every aspect of the game. But to win the FA Youth Cup, we won the league as well that year. And to do the double was a fantastic achievement. So then in uh, 1998, you made your debut. Can you remember who you played against and, and what your feelings were like from that day? Um, I got told the day before from David O'Leary, who was assistant manager under George Graham. He took over and he said, right, I said, you play. I was like, Phew. A lot of nerves, um, anxiety going through your body. And I remember I was in the, I was sharing a room with Paul Robinson on the night time and he was saying, oh my God, you're making your debut tomorrow. You're going you're gonna to get battered. Neil Shipley's playing up front. It was a big unit in those days. <laughs> it was, yeah. <laughs> so I was really nervous and a bit anxious, to be honest with you. Before the game, I didn't really sleep the night before. Pre-match meal, I couldn't really eat it because I was nervous. The minute I stepped across that white line, it's a different ball game altogether. The game just seemed clear. You couldn't hear the fans. It liked being the game being slowed down because you're in control of what you were doing. Incredible achievement to make your make your debut as a professional. It's all it's all I wanted to do when I was a young boy. So I fulfilled the dream doing that. That Leeds journey, I mean, you touched on it at the Champions League UEFA Cup. I mean, wow, what what was it like? I mean, it must have been crazy because David O'Leary was the was the manager during the Champions League run, wasn't he? And, and that was a great, great squad. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it started the year before when we in the UEFA Cup. We got the semi-finals of the UEFA Cup. We played Galatasaray in the, in the semi-final. And the, the next year, we won in the Champions League. And we started buying some real, real talented players. And all these players were like, really young, like Ferdinand, Fowler, uh, Michael Bridges, Robbie Keane, Seth Johnson, all young players, Oliver Decor, were all real talented young players who wanted to strive to get at the top. But O'Leary was the type of manager who would give you a chance, who would put the young players in and, and, and knock out what maybe the, the, uh, their older players would think and with their egos. So he'd give you a chance and he'd give you a platform to play on which we, we thrived upon. I mean, some of the games that we played were in a different league, going away to, to Lazio, Barcelona, Real Madrid. And then we get all the way to the semi-final and get beat by Valencia in the semi-final. The times at Ellen Road with the, with the fans there and the atmosphere down there was absolutely something special. Um, and it's, a, it's an incredible club. Glad to see him back in the Premier League. And then you got a big move to Newcastle. Was it nice going back sort of closer to home? Well, to be honest with you, I didn't really want to, I didn't want to leave Leeds because I was really happy there. We had a, like a say, fantastic club. I didn't want to leave. Um, but when a manager comes in for you like Bobby Robson, then you, you've got to think, yeah, like I said, I didn't want to leave. But it was a fantastic opportunity with the work with the manager. Of Bobby Robson, the players, and Alan Shearer and Gary Speed as well, who really impressed me when I was there. So again, that was a, another, it was a, it was a step so again, to try and win trophies, we got in the Champions League, UEFA Cup semi-final again. It didn't 
play great across the line. Uh, there's a funny story of uh, you got us tickets to watch you in the uh, against Marseille. I don't know whether it was the semi final or it was it was in the UEFA Cup. We went down there with me and this couple of the boys, and and we we misread the the train time, so we got all the way to Marseille. Uh, to go and watch you and there was no train back from uh, Marseille uh, terminal back to, and we couldn't we would have missed our flight so we actually got all the way to the ground and didn't even manage to watch you we tried to sell in our tickets but we uh, we didn't have any luck with that either so it was a bit of a washout trip <laughs> yeah, stink. we played that we played Marseille at home as well in that game we drew 1-1 with them in a that was one of my best games for Newcastle I was up against Diddy uh, Drogba was at Marseille at the time that was one of my my, my best games, probably one of my best games ever, to be honest with you. Um, and then, so 2004, you signed for the biggest club in the world. Tell me about that. I got a phone call from my agent saying, listen, Real Madrid are going to bid for you tomorrow. They're going to bid something like 20 million euros for you. What do you want to do? I said, well, what do you think? <laughs> so he said, well, I know your answer. I said, well, it's the biggest team in the world. I want to try and fulfill my ambitions by winning trophies at the, at the biggest club. She said, right, they're going to put a bid in tomorrow. And the next day, I was supposed to be travelling to Germany to see a, a doctor over there give me some in, injections in my, in my thigh, which I just had injured. So I was going to get a private jet over to Germany, put on, obviously, by the club. And I couldn't say anything to the club. So I had to arrive. I arrived in Germany anyway. Turn my phone and when we land them big... Nokia's, turned my phone on, and he said, right, they've accepted the bid. So I'm in Germany getting these injections, but you can't tell anyone. So I'm there with the physio and stuff like that, getting these injections. And then I flew, I flew again, private jet over from Germany to Madrid, had my medical signed, done within 48 hours. Surreal, really surreal. Wow. What was it like when you got into that dressing room uh, at Real Madrid and looked around and saw... The, the quality was it did you have anxiety did you feel am I ready for this or, or was you really pumped up for the challenge no slightly daunting when you walk into a dressing room with the likes of Beckham Michael Owen well I knew those two anyway from England but Zidane Figo Ronaldo Raul Guti Casillas all them type of players so it's slightly daunting for a lad from Middlesbrough to go and play for this this incredible team but they soon, they soon realised what type of character you are and, and what you like. Um, they realised that I was trying to pick up the language and try to learn, try to fit in. And they appreciated what I tried to do. Um, like again, once you get in that pitch, you're fine. There's no nerves, there's no anxiety. You just enjoy the game. I have to ask about the, uh, the, the, your yeah. debut. Uh, I mean... I mean, just bad luck. I think your, your career at Real Madrid was, was bad luck, injuries and everything. And then, you, you know, I actually remember watching your debut and you actually started the game quite well, didn't you? Yeah, I did start the game well. I was, uh, I was doing okay. But then I made a ridiculous tackle to get a yellow card, which probably could have been a red card, to be honest with you. It was that bad. Um, then I scored an own goal, just trying to get my body in the way of, of the ball and it flex in. And then you just want the ground to eat you up. You just think, oh my God. But then you realise where you are. You get on with the game. Second half came. Another yellow card, which was never a yellow card, in my view. Yeah. Got the red, marching off. But the, the whole of the stadium stood up and started clapping me. I couldn't really? believe it. I couldn't believe it, yeah. The, the um, emotion running from my body at that stage of the game, having just been sent off my debut, working it a year a year in rehabilitation to get sent off on my debut, but then the, all the fans to stand up and applaud me off is an incredible, incredible figure. And after the game, I'm in the dressing room and Ronaldo comes up and he says, your leg's okay, isn't it? I said, yeah, it's absolutely fine. Went, That's the most important thing, you're back. Because he'd been through injuries as well. And he said, look, you're back, don't worry about that. And we won the game as well, I think it was 4-1 in the end, so I was pleased. Looking back at your Real Madrid career, how would you reflect on your time in Spain? Would you have, would you have ideally liked to have finished your career there and, and spent many, many seasons? It's full of regret, to be honest with you. Full of regret because you're enjoying this biggest team in the world and you've got the platform to play and your body lets you down and you're not fit and it takes you a year to get fit over an injury, operation after injection after operation. It becomes difficult. You know, you've got to be strong mentally because it, it is tough. It is difficult. When you get to these periods of your career 
Um, and like I said, the pinnacle of a young footballer's career. I'm 24 year old. You know, I'm, I'm at this at this club and I can't fulfil my potential at this football club. Playing in the Champions League, trying to win the league, it didn't happen. Um, it's a massive, a massive regret in my career that I didn't stay out there longer. I come back on loan to Middlesbrough for a season, and that was a huge regret of mine as well. Signing back at my boyhood club when I'd just been on loan, I should have had another year in Spain to try and do it, but I made a made a wrong decision. Well, yeah, you're right. You you went to Borough, but then you you made the the biggest sign in your career, I would say. I <laughs> think going to Tottenham at my my club. <laughs> That was a good. That was good times, there, wasn't it? I mean, you had some great times at Tottenham. Yeah, again, um, Wendy Ramos brought me in. Um, he was a manager again who, who done wonders at Seville, won the UEFA Cup there twice, twice on the spin with them in consecutive years, and joined then, ended up winning the League Cup and scoring the winner. Um, fantastic achievement. It was the only trophy I won. Should have won a lot more, but but never played in some good teams, but never won them trophies. But like I say, winning that trophy at, at Wembley, it's what dreams what dreams are made of when you're a young boy playing the playground. You always want to play in the cup final. You always want to score the winner. And I did, and some people like you crazy, I suppose. Well, I mean, my emotions that day, I, I was watching it, and, uh, you know, the cross come in, and you've, you've, got on, you've got your head on the end of it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just uh, your emotion as well. I just saw the relief on your face, and the whole of Tottenham, the first trophy we won in a long time. Uh, what, what, was the, what was it like in the dressing room after with the lads? You actually got it wrong, Liam. It didn't come off my head. It came off my face. Did it come off your face? Right there on the nose. Wow. All count, they all count, so I was, I was really pleased. But like I say, after it's an unbelievable feeling to win a trophy. Like You watch these Man United lads and Man City lads and Liverpool lads winning trophies. Oh, winning European Cups and stuff like that. We won the League Cup. But afterwards... It's unbelievable. You're joyous, you, you celebrate, you, in, you enjoy it. Um, you have a good party and really enjoy the time. And I suppose you had a good party as well. All the Spurs fans that have been erupting. Um, I like to say, incredible, incredible moments. Not just for me, for my family. Let's talk about your England career. So again, I mean, you made eight caps in the end, but really without injury, you would have had... 80 caps, wouldn't you? You you are you were the perfect England defender, good on the ball, quick, good leader. I mean, looking at quite sim- similarities with sort of Ledley King as well at Tottenham, not, you know, two centre-halves that should have had many, many, many more caps, but with injury, uh, unfortunately, stopped that. Like you say, eight caps, not good enough. Not good enough. Should have made a, a lot more, but like I say, injury didn't help. Should have had a lot more England caps, didn't. What was your best memory in your career looking back, Jonathan? Um, your debut. Is, is the biggest thing. It's an, an, an incredible thing. It's a dream to do it. Playing for Spurs, lifting that trophy. Uh, playing for my hometown team in Middlesbrough, captaining them. All things you want to do as a young kid. If you put the work in and the dedication and you, you have family members who support you, you, you you've got a chance. Who was the, the best manager you had? I mean, you played under some, some very, very good managers. I mean, Bobby Robson was a character, wasn't he? Yeah, Bobby Robson was fantastic. Harry Redknapp, um, Terry Venables, extremely good man managers. Dave Dalry gave me an opportunity, 19 year old, young, aggressive manager. Um, you talk about a lot of different managers who, who have different things going from. I joined Stoke at 30 year old and I played under Tony Pulis. And he taught me things about defending that I never thought I knew. Really? So you learn every single manager. I talk Karanka with his organisation. You learn so many things from so many different managers. It's important to take everything on board because if you don't, then you're going to fail. What would be the best advice you would give to a young player today uh, that's in today's game? Work as hard as you can. Dedicate yourself to the sport. Make sacrifices. Sacrifice is the biggest thing. You can't do what your friends do now. If you're a young player coming up with social media and everything that's going on in the world, you've got to be really determined to get at the top. And like I say, I say it my son every day. Every single day, no matter what you're doing, work as hard as you can. Because if you don't, you go nowhere in life. In your job, in my job, in any person's job, what their occupation is, if you don't work hard, you'll get nowhere. So work ethic. It's got to be drilled into them daily. Yeah, some great advice there. And what would be, if you used to say one thing that was the key to your success over your career, what do you think it would be? Determination. 
to reach the top. Determination to not give up. Determination to strive to better things and keep on improving. Don't settle for just making your debut. Keep on striving to be the best as you can be. Move from different clubs, try and get better and better and better. And try and keep on leaping up them steps to get at the top. That's the biggest thing you can try and do. Amazing. So I know you, you, you've got two beautiful kids now and you're married to Natalie as well and uh, you're a family man. But what's next for you then? Uh, not sure yet. Just, just wait to see what, what comes up. Like I say, I've got two kids who are going crazy at the minute and my <laughs> wife has a dance, dance skill. So times are good and I'm enjoying it.